And welcome back into Tigerville, South Carolina as we get set for game two of the Tigerville Regional. In case you missed it earlier, Georgia Southwestern fell 5-4 to four to Mount Off. They were down 5 nothing going into the top of the ninth. Mounted a little mini comeback, even had the tying run at first base and the go-ahead run at the plate with only one out, but couldn't advance them further. So unfortunately, unfortunately for them, they have to try to stave off elimination against the number one and hosting North Greenville Crusaders. Again, if North, so the way this is going to work, if Georgia Southwestern loses tonight, they're done. North Greenville moves on to face Mount Olive in a, in a glorified best of three series to see who moves on to the Super Regional. If Georgia Southwestern wins tonight, puts North Greenville at 0-1 against Mount Olive tomorrow night at 7:30, and then the North Greenville will be trying to stave off elimination. And if they were to win that one, then that'll be everybody at one and one, and then the chaos it, it really becomes fun. There. So as we get ready for play, as you see North Greenville take the field. The defensive alignment for the Crusaders out in the outfield from left to right. Out in left is Zach Zara, Pat Monteith in center, Marek Kloop in right. And on the infield, you'll have Corey Bivens at third, Jalen Vasquez at short, Zach Zara at second, David Lewis at first, and John Michael Fail behind the plate. And on the mound for the Crusaders, senior right-hander number 14, Noah Takas, making his 10th start of the year, 37 and two-thirds innings pitched, 5-1 and one record, 2.87 ERA, 34 hits, 12 runs, all of which earned, 13 walks to 22 strikeouts, opponents batting 246. Off the right-hander, Noah Takas. Yeah, he's been... Yeah, he's been excellent this season. As we take a look at the Georgia Southwestern lineup. And basically, they, they name an unchanged side from their earlier game against Mount Olive. It'll be Jake Blinstrom, Miles Hartsfield, Corey Lee, Calvin Alexander, Reed Ragsdale, Ger Garrett Bradley, George Davis, Paul Hedgeman, and Chris Patterson rounds up the order. We'll talk about their starting pitcher in the bottom half of the first inning. Throw down from Fail, and it appears we're ready to get underway. Approaching 7.31 right now. Again, we were, it's a miracle. Usually in these things, you don't ever really, in the intended start time, because we were, you know, first pitch was scheduled right away, 7.30. It appears we're going to be basically right on the money. With yeah, any, anytime, anytime you can start these games, especially after another game on time, that's a big deal because yes, it typically is. it does, like you said, it does not go that way. No, it does not, not at all. Again, first game for the defending North Ch National Champions, North Greenville University. The Hurricanes trying to stave off elimination as the first pitch from Takis on the outside corner. First pitch officially at 7.32 p.m. Of course, North Greenville in their shift. Zags are practically playing short right field out there. That one missed inside. Again, your umpires for today's game behind the plate is Kevin Spivy. Don Andrews down the first baseline. Bobby Dunnigan, the, ump the ump umpire at second base, and Danny Everett over there at third. 1-1, one, one, it's fouled back. Glenstrup was officially 0 for 1 in the game. He walked three times and then had an RBI sacrifice fly. And just a just an FYI, Bobby Dunnigan, the second base umpire, is the crew chief for this umpire crew. Cow remains at one and two. And you saw in that previous pitch there that. Lindstrom trying to go against the shift right there. And Corey Bivens practically playing right in that normal 5-6 hole. Lindstrom trying to go the other way with it. Here's the 1-2. Yes. Oh. And it's tied 2-2. Two two. 
And a really good crowd filing in for the start of this one. See how the crowd, the, the crowd continues down, and they also got a bunch of people on the hill. As that one's popped up, third base side, Bivens and Zara will give it a look, but it'll be out by the batting cages. In the hill down the right field side, I can see a good amount of people there standing up on the top of the hill. Count remains two and two to Blinstrom. Two two is not close. Three and two. Jake Blinstrom doing a lot of what he did in game one, working the count, seeing a lot of pitches, doing it what a true leadoff hitter does. Yeah, exactly what you want if you're Georgia Southwestern. You at least making Takis throw a lot of pitches to start off this game. That one's lined out to left field. Zara retreating, now stopping. Makes the play, one away. And you can see that entire bad Blinstrup was thinking towards the left side just because North Greenville has that shift, again, that you mentioned. It's banned in the major leagues, but it's not banned here. They had three out, uh, infielders on the right side. Again, as I mentioned, Zara was play, practically playing short right field, practically another outfielder for the Crusaders. Again, they're, they're, they're going to put the shift on again. There's another lefty, Miles Hartsfield. Takes his first pitch to him is a breaking ball that didn't quite get on top of that one. And just a little little heads up for the Georgia Southwestern lineup. The graphics that you'll see on the screen throughout the day are coming into the into today. They're not updated after game one. So you see that 296 average. Hartsfield actually actually his average is still 296 after game no, one. Well, so there, there, you yeah, there you go. So right that, that's one that is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Got a hitter from the count here at 2-0. Oh. Now it's 3-0. Oh. Blinch, oh, excuse me, uh, Hartsfield was having a quiet day in game one against Mount Olive until all of a sudden had a three-run bomb out to right center field that brought the game within one. That one's right down the middle, three and one. North Greenville to be successful, they're really going to need Takis, especially in their other ace, Reese Fields, as well. But they're going to need a return of the playoff Takis that they saw a year ago that led them to the national title. 3-1 is not close. First base runner for the Hurricanes here in game two. That'll bring up Corey Lee. Lee was one for four, his base hit coming in the ninth inning of game one earlier today. Lee hitting 264 now coming into this game. Another pitch that misses his own from Takis. Yeah, North Greenville, definitely no secret about it. They love the shift. And they get, now we got three infielders on the left side of the infield. Again, if he, he Practically part in the Red Sea out there, with, especially with David Lewis <laughs> holding the runner on over at first. It was a gigantic hole over there on the right side. That one missed off the plate, too, and oh. Yeah, the shift for North Greenville is all Trey Dyson's doing. Assistant coach Trey Dyson came in, basically kind of talked Landon into doing a lot of shifting, and it's paid off for the most part. And, you know, I mentioned this before, we, we kind of noticed at the end of last season that it was starting to hurt them just a little bit. It seemed like more and more teams were starting to kind of get base hits that would normally be right to a fielder. Because of the shift, they turned into base hits. But overall, it's been a, a huge factor for North Greenville's defense. And there's four straight out of the zone. So back-to-back -back walks issued by Noah Takis. And there's runners on first and second. This game kind of starting very similar to the way things started with Mount All. Their starter, Stevens. He had a little bit of trouble finding finding the zone early on. The Hurricanes weren't able to cash in on those early opportunities, and it really cost them. Yeah, if you're for the Hurricanes, they need to jump on North Greenville while they can right now because once Takis gets going, it's tough to stop him. He's definitely one of those pitchers that fall in line. Get him early, or you're not, you're not going to get him. Mm -hmm. 2.87 ERA for Takis coming in. Here's Calvin Alexander. Yeah. Waves at a breaking ball. Oh, 
Alexander was 0 for 5 in game one earlier today against Mount Olive. And Takis averages just under half a walk per inning. So two walks in one inning is not something that you typically see from him. Here's the 0-1. Their most back throw behind up down to first base. They didn't get him. Definitely like David Lewis was kind of in an awkward position to try to catch that one and put the tag down. Not getting too many objections here. We, we did have two review, uh, two, two um, reviews in the first game. Doesn't appear we're going to get our first one tonight. Count even at one and one. With the breaking ball, and it's painted on the outside corner at the knees, one and two. That was Takis' 20th pitch already. Here's the one-two. Just got a piece of that one, staying alive. And the thing is, Mount Olive is very deep in their bullpen. North Greenville's got some good arms, but they've also de dealt with some inconsistency, especially down the stretch and then also in the conference tournament as well. So North Greenville's bullpen probably say is definitely not as deep as Mount Olive, so you're definitely going to want to get as long as you can from Noah Takis here tonight. Yeah, the, the anchors of the bullpen have been lights out, but in between there have been some inconsistencies. That one's fouled out of play, and we'll do it once more. Those middle innings are where opponents have really been able to get back into a lot of ball games. Tell you what, that last foul ball, the foul tip into the back of the netting behind home plate, Ron Powell, Landon Powell's father is down there. He did not flinch. Yeah, it's not his first radio. No. Do the one-two once more. The breaking ball that is hit a ton. Zara is going back, but he's gonna look at that one, and that ball is gone. A three-run shot for Calvin Alexander, and the back-to-back -back walks from Tack has come back to bite him. For Alexander, that's his 10th home run of the year. RBI's 36, 37, and 38 for him. And the Hurricanes get out to a very important 3 0 lead. And uh, yeah, see that the, uh, the home score updated. That is not our doing. That is up on the scoreboard right now. So we'll hopefully they'll uh, get that corrected in just a moment. They even got the hit up on the roadside. <laughs> So here's Reed Ragsdale. Swings and misses that one. And that was a breaking ball that Takis left right over the heart of the plate, and Alexander did not miss it. He's the real home run threat for this Hurricane squad. You had mentioned in the previous broadcast, their team that don't hit many of them, that one coming into the regional all season long, they've hit 37 home runs. They had one in game one today, and now they have another here in game two. No one misses off the plate. And again, if there's a time to play North Greenville, it's definitely right now, definitely riding a, a time where they went to the conference tournament. We're having a, a ton of momentum going into the 44-6 and six regular season, but then they go two and done in the conference Carolinas tournament. It was quite shocking. Here's the 3 1. It shows Bun again. If he were to get that down, that's probably a base hit, especially if he gets it close enough to, to the line. That, that would have been a base hit. Corey Bivens was charging, but he's coming from the shortstop position. He'd have had no chance at that one. Yeah, Bun down the third base line. There's no chance. Could walk to first base. Here's the 3 2. Popped up out of play left side. We'll do it again. Talked about when Takis hit 20 pitches, he is now one away from hitting 30. Still just one out here in the top of the first. Not how North Greenville wanted to get their regional started. Not how they wanted to get started, but definitely how the Hurricanes wanted to start their elimination. Absolutely. Game. Here's the 3-2 once more. Breaking ball, didn't break enough. Third walk of the inning for Takis. I'm gonna bring up Garrett Bradley. So UNC Pembroke and Newberry, that's the first game of their regional, right? Still hasn't started? 
by the live stats I've got, I have not heard That's any tough. updates. But uh, it's going to be a long night for them. It, that, that or they'll, they may just end up posting it, uh, you know, yeah. starting tomorrow. Yeah, early mound visit out there. Just get, try, try to settle Takis down just a little bit. A rough start. Again, four of the first five guys have reached here. And really, only one of them's earned their way on. And that was Calvin Alexander who launched a shot out to left field. Every, every, there's been three walks in there. Just got to settle down. Hey, Takis, let them put it in play. Let your defense do the work. Yeah, I mean, give him credit. That that home run was a no doubter. As soon yeah. as it hit the, as soon as it left the bat, you knew it was gone. You could tell by the sound it made off mm -hmm. the bat it was gone. Yep, definitely. And you don't want to fall too far behind because the left-hander that, that the Hurricanes have going tonight is a real, real tough one. A guy that averages nearly 12 strikeouts per nine innings. So you don't want to fall too far behind. Yeah, it looks like right now that game between Newberry and UNC Pembroke scheduled for 745, which is just one minute from now. So we'll mm -hmm. see if the live stream actually starts up or if that's going to be delayed even further. Oh, one to Bradley misses outside. We count even at one and one. And I stand corrected. Brian Hand, appreciate the heads up. Nine o'clock start. Ooh. Wow. I'm guessing they're only going to have one game. Yeah. I, I, I cannot imagine another game I starting at midnight. Yeah, I don't think past they, that. I don't think Belmont Abbey and Columbia <laughs> State would be too happy with a midnight no. first pitch. So count it one and two to Garrett Bradley. Yep, he said the uh, the other game the other games have been moved to tomorrow. Gotcha. So just one game tonight. That one's hit out to right center field. Pat Monteith had to go a decent ways for it. Ooh, Ooh. made things interesting definitely as he got onto the warning track, but he makes the grab. And the wind blowing from right to left, so the wind probably even, probably helped that one. So here's George Davis, seventh man to hit in the inning. Davis went two for four. Again, a large part of their offense and so, their hits that they had started from the bottom third of the order. Seven, eight, nine guys against Mount Olive. They had three hits going into the ninth, and they were all by the seven, eight, nine guys. That one's hit on a rope, but right to Vasquez at short. He'll go the short way to second, and that will finally retire the side. The Hurricanes only have one hit in the inning, but it was a big one. It was a three-run shot off the bat of Calvin Alexander. They got off to a flying start here in the elimination game for them. It's 3-0. Hurricanes, North Greenville coming to bat. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Head, head to the bottom half of the first inning. Hurricanes jump out 3 0. You get a look at the North Greenville lineup. First will be Carter Deerdorf, DH for today's contest. Pat Monteith will follow him. He leads the team in home runs with 17. John Michael Fail, there's a storyline there to talk about with him as well. Marek Kloop, David Lewis, Jalen Vasquez, Zach Zara, Bryce Roddy, and Corey Bivens to round things out. And the man they'll be facing. The big old left-hander Ray Yusun. 
Houston at 9-1 on the year. This is his 15th start. ERA of three even. This is his first pitch to Deardorff spikes that one. Again, as I mentioned, 9-1 record. Does have one complete game, 90 innings pitch. 70 hits, 32 runs, 30 of which earned. 44 walks to 117 strikeouts. The average is 11.7 strikeouts per nine innings. Wow. Finds his own that time, just at the knees, two and one. North Greenville does seem to have a success against some power, some power arms. They're gonna need some of that tonight. That one misses, three and one. Yeah, North Greenville with a lot of lefties in the lineup, though, four to be exact, so yes. they are going to be challenged. 3-1. That one's hit out to center field. That one's tagged. Will it get down? It will. <laughs> Thought Patterson was going to come in and maybe make the catch, but I guess he just didn't feel like it was worth diving for. Yeah, I was going to say, this early in the game, you don't want to have to dive for a ball and risk having it go by you for an extra base hit, possibly. I mean, in dead center field like that, if it gets by you, it's probably an inside-the-park home oh, run. Especially with Carter Deardorff's yeah. speed, I, I would absolutely agree with that. Here's Pat Monteith. Yeah, speaking of speed, Pat Monteith, 17 stolen bases on the season. But Along with 17 bombs home on the runs, well, yep. leads the team. On a team with John Michael Fale and Marek Kloop, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> Get a look at his numbers right there. 17 home runs, 46 runs batted in. 102 him as he's swinging the, down the right field line. That's going to get out of play. Count even at one and one. See a news camera out here in the crowd. They think that they're here for the man on deck, but we'll talk about him in just a moment. We will. That one's ripped down the third base line. It's fair. That one's going to get into the corner down the left field line. Geared off around third. They are going to hold him there. Good decision. Throw back to third. He will get back safely. And it's a double for Pat Monty. You mentioned, partner, they were looking like he was waving for a second. And then Hunter Dilworth, third base coach, said, oh, whoa there. I, yeah, I stand corrected. <laughs> So aforementioned, John Michael Fail. You get another rip at that, that look at that rip by Pat Monteith just inside the line down the third base line. John Michael Fail is chasing a little bit of history. Last weekend of the regular season, he broke the RBI record for Division II. He's currently tied for home runs. The all-time Division II record. Takes that strike on the inside corner. Yeah, this is the NCAA Division II career home run record. So this isn't some some small little record that, you know, is not a big deal. This is a huge deal in the sport of baseball. John Michael Fail has a shot at making history here. But with two runners on base, he, he, he shouldn't necessarily swing for the fence right now. Or one that's hit on the ground to third. He's going to look Deardorff back. Throw across the diamond is in time. So not going to happen on this plate appearance, but up next is Marek Kloop. Kloop batting 375 on the year. 13 home runs and 44 ribbies. What a journey this guy. Guys, and on this season, mm -hmm. from Tigerville to Japan in the Tokyo Dome, then back to Tigerville. <laughs> Represented the Czech Republic in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, had a double off a 101 mile an hour pitch. Mm -hmm. if there's any doubts if he can play at the next level? I think he answered that. Here's the one out. Hit hard on the ground, third base side, but foul. I wonder if Deardorff's heart was racing a little bit on that one. <laughs> Mark Lupin, and you're 90 feet away from that guy, and you don't have a glove. I'd be a little nervous, too. Go, 
Not even at one and one. That's high two and one. Kloop came to this NGU program a few years ago, transfer from NC State University. Here's the 2-1. Healthy hack at that one came up empty. As father Vladimir watched the natural, and that's what that's what got him into the sport of baseball. Wow. And bringing the whole sport, the Czech Republic, you know, mm -hmm. growing the game of baseball, first time in the WBC, and they'll be back, too. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Three and two. Big pitch in the inning, the 3-2. Got him swinging. Good pitch that, that time there from Usum. Took a little something off there. Hard throwing left, he brought a change up there. Something off speed to Marek Kaluk. After a single from Deerdorf, a double by Pat Monteith. A ground out to third from Fail, and then a strikeout of Marek Kaluk. Here's David Lewis, first pitch to him, just off the outside corner. Lewis transferred in the fall. He came, made his way from Clemson. Had himself a very successful first season here in Tigerville. one is not close either. 2-0. Oh. I'm sure it took Landon some time to forgive David Lewis from, for, uh, being a Clemson, yeah. former Clemson player. Head coach Landon Powell, <laughs> of course, being an All-American at South Carolina. Along with most of his coaching staff yeah, <laughs> playing Eisen. at South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all of them. Matt Williams. So I tried to come with a breaking ball. That one is nowhere close, 3-0. Now, it wouldn't be the worst thing where there is first base is open. David Lewis obviously has got the pop. He, he would be able to tie this game quickly. Jalen Vasquez, who is a three fifty four hitter. It's on deck. Of course, he had the 3-0 green light, fouls it away. Vasquez would be a lefty-lefty matchup as well. That is true. Another transfer from South Carolina. The one's not, not close, and that will load the bases. So bases full of Crusaders now, two away. And that will bring up Jalen Vasquez. That was definitely a case of, hey, if you walk him, it's no big deal, but don't make, don't give up a mistake. Mm -hmm. David Lewis, even as one of those guys, he's had a three-homer game earlier this year. You definitely don't want to give him too much to hit, so go after the le go for the lefty-lefty matchup. Vasquez with a 354 average. His eight home runs and 32 runs batted in. First pitch fastball misses upstairs, 1-0. Again, if he can get one that way, it can be a little tough with lefty-lefty matchup, but if he can guide one out to left center field, there's a decent-sized hole out there in the, in the left center field. The 1-0. That's not close either, 2-0. Twenty-four pitches so far for you, son. And Twenty-five is not close. And three, no, he's one pitch away from walking in a run. Zach Zara, number ninety-nine, waits on deck for the Crusaders. Three, oh, that's the outside corner, much to the dismay, but to the home plate umpire is back behind the plate. <laughs> I think. And I just saw uh, Landon Powell's dad basically jump out of his seat out of that one. <laughs> I think they're trying to make the argument that that was a bit high. And Based off it's the close. Relay. It's around the belt. 3-1. That one catches the outside corner. Run it full. So from 3-0 to 3-2. 
Boy, this would be obviously huge for the Hurricanes if they can get out of this jam. Absolutely. Here's the 3-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Sanders put the first two guys on at second and third, nobody out, and they load the bases, but can't bring nothing across. Good, good job there from Yusan to get out of trouble. And the Hurricanes head to the second on top, three to nothing. You're searching for a place where you can distinguish yourself, a place where you can pursue what you want to do and who you want to be. At North Greenville University, you will earn more than just a degree. You'll grow your faith, develop relationships with new friends and faculty, serve others while experiencing a vibrant student life. Find your place at North Greenville University where Christ makes the difference. Eight, nine, and one do up for the Hurricanes here in the top half of the second with them on top three to nothing. Gets back out there. Peel down the third base. See if he went around. He did not. Did I or did I not warn you the first game? That was like, yeah, when the umpire is in, in, in <laughs> you did. red, get here. It's going to be interesting. Here's the one out. That's inside two and out. Has been batting 273 on the year. Second on the club in home runs with five. He might have just hit it six. Marek Klu back to the wall. He's not going to get it. It's out of here. A, a solo shot for Paul Hedgeman, his sixth home run of the year. And the Hurricanes lead it four to nothing. And his sixth round tripper of the year, you get a little of the celebration in the dugout. Can you tell those guys are having a good time? Another look at it. Just a groove that one right in there. There's a 2 0 fastball and just threw it right down the middle. Look for a second. Marek Kluput might have had a chance at the wall and then just realizing, nope, I'm not going to be able to get that one. Yeah, just run out of, ran out of room. First pitch to Chris Patterson is in there for a called strike. Talk about momentum. Give up, have runners on second and third, nobody out, and then you have the bases loaded, and you're able to get out of it with nothing, and then you're able to come in here and add on another run. All the momentum is in that hurricane dugout. There's the 1-1. One, one. They can both foul back to the net. Two and uh, One and two. Passing those three home runs on the year, 27 runs batted in. The one, two. Close, two and two. Two, two. Just got a piece of that one. Of course, we, we talked about the struggles North Greenville had in Gastonia, the conference tournament, two games and then done, just like that. But also figured it's like, okay, they're going to come back home and where they're 26-0 and in there. They have not lost this year at home. But the Hurricanes have just said, yeah, we're, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> We've come at, they've come out and their two hits thus far have both gone over the fence. Yeah, I mean, Georgia Southwestern is playing to keep their season alive. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, any team that – is fighting to do that is a scary team. 
Exactly. Package ready, and he comes once more with the 2-2. Two -two. That's downstairs, 3-2. and two. And Tagus usually does not walk many guys. He had three walks in that first inning. Here's the 3-2. Got him to chase one in the turf. That's the first strikeout for Noah Takis. That'll send things back to the top of the order. Lindstrom led off the game with a fly out to left. And he had a really good battle, too. I believe it was an eight-pitch at bat. Takes first pitch, called strike on the outside corner. I believe if I'm mistaken, they're changing a little bit of their shift. They had, I think they had a three infielders on the right side for this guy in the first inning, kind of shifting things up a little bit just because if he can't lay down a bun, you don't want it to be a for sure single. Here's the 0-1. That's ripped right back off of Tack because he can't find it. Looks like it's going to be an infield hit for Blindstrom. That was a scorcher right back at Noah. The way he did move, I, I, I feared for a second he was going to be injured or something, but he just apparently couldn't find the ball. Yeah, the trainer's not even coming out, so. Well, he waved him off. He's yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Get another look at that one. Oh, right off. That was, a, that was a hard hit. Yeah, that was it. It didn't hit the ground at all. That was right off of the thigh, I believe. So here's Miles Hartsfield. First pitch to him. This is low and in. And yeah, now there's the shift you were talking about. Mm -hmm. They're going to leave Bivens over yeah. there just because, you know, with one out, there is a risk of a bunt. That does say one home run. Hartsfield hit his second home run of the year in, earlier today. Here's the 1-0. That one's nub first base side. Can Lewis get there? Dives. Let's see the ball on the ground. He couldn't quite come up with a good effort there, there from the first baseman, David Lewis. It's tough, too. That little corner down there with the dugout stuff. Oh, yeah. It's hard to pick it up down there sometimes. <laughs> Count even at one and one to Hartsfield. Then breaking ball slapped out of play left side. Packs ready, and here's the one two. That's way outside. And that's what you were talking about. You want a waste pitch to at least make the batter think. That one was so far outside. It was really, like you said, a waste of a waste pitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have pegged a right-hand batter right between the numbers. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Just got a piece of that one. And especially the top half of the order for the Hurricanes is really working tack. I mean, Long at bats, so drawing walks, making see pitches, fouling off really good pitches, just spoiling stuff. They've really made no attack us work here, especially early on. Count still sits at two and two. So it's on the ground. All right, the Roddy, he'll go to second for one on the first, not in time. Yeah, you know, with the shift, they're kind of playing a little bit more towards the right side. Bryce Roddy had to come a decent way for that one. Shoving it over the Corey Bivens, the third baseman, taking the throw over there at short. Nonetheless, there's two away here for Corey Lee. And Lee was one of those walks issued by Noah Takis that scored on the Calvin Alexander home run. Which, by the way, he stands on deck. 55 pitches for Noah Takis in just one and two-thirds innings. 
Definitely, if you had said told that to Landon Powell, that'd be one of the worst case scenarios, for sure. That's on the ground, third base side. Diving play by Bivens, but he's only going to be able to knock it down. Cool. Base hit for Corey Lee. That's the fourth hit of the ball game for the Hurricanes. And look who's going to have another chance at a three-run homer. Yep, Calvin Alexander, as you mentioned, just one inning ago, launched a three-run shot out to left field. Out by the trees, by the scoreboard out in left field. And here comes Landon Powell. And he usually doesn't come out to have conversations either. He's going to take the ball from Noah Takis, and he's going to go to his bullpen. So short outing for Noah Takis. We'll come back and tell you about the new North Greenville pitcher in a moment. Well, an early call to the bullpen. It's going to be number 15, Caleb Cox, true freshman from Lake Wiley, South Carolina, went to Clover High School, 4.35 ERA, 4-3 and three for the year, 41 and a third innings pitched, 32 strikeouts. In addition to that, this will be his 15th appearance, 20 earned runs allowed, and opponents are batting 250 against him. And one other number as number of note he has given up five home runs this season which is there's actually a three-way tie for the team lead Caleb Freeman Caleb Cox and Brody Fowler have all given up five home runs each and that's a problem because the man that is coming up to the plate once Caleb Cox's warm-up tosses are done hit a home run just an inning ago a three-run shot which he'd have another chance to do Again, it's so important the way North Greenville's offense has kind of been scuffling a little bit. Definitely and with the arm that you sent in the dugout over there for the Hurricanes coming back out, you don't you don't want to fall too far behind. Uh, you got a lot of faith in the North Greenville offense. They're very potent, but man, that's, that's, a, that's a tough cat over there. and the, That's a tough hombre in that other dugout. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you have all the confidence in the world in this North Greenville lineup. It's one of the best in the country, but – is, like you said, it's a great starter that they've got going, good pitching staff overall as well. You do not want to fall behind any more than you already are. Exactly. So a chance for Calvin Alexander to do more damage. Alexander, not the great batting average, but again, leads the team with home runs now with 10. He's the first guy on their team to get the double digits. In fact, the next closest is at five or six now, excuse me. First pitch to him, the breaking ball misses low. And another huge hole on the right side of the infield for the Crusader defense. Long look in from Cox, the 1-0. Hard on the ground, third base side, but it's going to be foul. Talking during the break, one of the few days we haven't had to worry about the sun and where it sets. We've had sun delays in the past here at Ray and B. Dillard Field, including one against Southern Wesleyan in the regular season. But I hope you didn't jinx us for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> had a healthy hack at that one, one and two. Yeah, I remember those. That sun out there can be deadly. I remember uh, Vision 1 Winthrop up there in Rock Hill. 
they had a lot of those, and then they built that gar gargantuan uh, batter's eye in dead huh. center field. Yeah. It like, looks like it's like 90 feet tall. <laughs> Count it one and two. Ooh, just missed on the inside corner. And the North Greenville faithful behind the plate are. They're getting restless. Easy to say they didn't agree with that call. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one funny thing is um, when the turf was put in here at Ray and B. Dealer Field, there was talk about potentially getting a, a back, uh, you know what I'm talking about, the batter's, batter's eye. eye. Yeah, yeah in center field but if we can get if we can get the camera to kind of show the the hill up there look how tall that batter's eye would have to be i mean you're talking about yeah. almost 10 you're talking like 10 stories high before it even starts to make a difference i don't so, think you have that much space out there uh, no it's there's, there's not a downward hill yeah there's not much it. space out there either it would have to be like right i mean you're talking inches behind the fence line Here's the 2-2. Runner takes off for third, but fouled back. There's a bunch of Craig Myrtles back there. Craig Myrtle trees, and mm -hmm. I know them well because I, when I did landscaping here at North Greenville, I had to be the one to cut them several times. Oof. Sure, that was a fun job. Oh. <laughs> Cow remains 2-2. Two and two. It's one of those this rewarding. But at the same time, it's <laughs> the novelty wears off pretty quickly. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Big pitch there from Caleb Cox to retire Calvin Alexander. But not before the Hurricanes pick up another run on the Paul Hegeman home run out to right field. We head to the bottom half of the sec second inning. 4 nothing Hurricanes. Bottom third of the order due up for the Crusaders. It'll be Zach Zara, Bryce Rodney, and then Corey Bivens. And then we'll get things back to the top of the order if we can get there. First pitch to Zara is on the outside corner. Houston back out there for his second inning of work. He had an eventful bottom half of the first inning, but got out of it unscathed. Breaking ball misses. Get a look at Zach Zara's numbers right there, 232 on the year. Had a hack at that one, fouled it back to the net. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. Zara goes down swinging. Third strikeout already for Yusin. So here's Bryce Roddy. Roddy batting 369 on the year. One home runs, 28 runs batted in. If I'm not mistaken, didn't that home run come while they're in Houston at Minute Maid Park? Op opening weekend. 
we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one's nubbed out to center field. Going to be a tough play for Patterson. He's not going to get there. Going to be a blue base hit for Bryce Roddy. Third base hit for the Crusaders. Our producer, Will Cahaley, uh, confirms yes, it was. Okay. So you were correct. Thank there. you, Will. <laughs> Here's Corey Bivens. I'm okay. sorry, but th throughout the year, these games all blend in. So. <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Add to that so many other sports, too. Man, you just you lose, you, you forget about Brain things so fast. Oh, awesome. yeah, big time. Oh, good. <laughs> Vivis first pitch swinging out to left field, but it's right at the left fielder Blinstrup for out number two. And they're making some good contact off of Houston thus far. I'll get things back to the top of the order for Carter Deerdorf. Deerdorf led things off an inning ago with a base hit to center field. First pitch to him, off the plate, 1-0. Oh. He's now at 120 strikeouts on the year. That's quite impressive to say the least. That one misses 2-0. Oh. Hit a friendly count here for Carter Deerdorf. Pitch hacking away the 2-0 pitch. Fouls it back, 2-1. Yeah. Roddy over there at first, 7 for 9 on the year in the stolen base department. Doubt he'd be going with a lefty on the mound. In fact, they're going to check over at first. Roddy back safe with ease. Here's the 2 1. Megan Ball foul back to net again. You can tell some of these North Greenville hitters are they're fighting a little bit with Houston a little bit. They're seeing some pitches and they're trying to, because I mean, Houston's one of their guys, like they're very, in their first two starters that they have, they, they, they let them go. They let them go as far as they possibly can. That one's hit out to right field, but I think that one's going to stay in the ballpark. Bradley's under it, and he's got it, and that will retire the side. A one-out base hit from Bryce Roddy, but nothing else doing for the Crusaders. We play two. It's four to nothing, Hurricanes. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college, college sports. sports. Here's Reed Ragsdale. Next first pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. North Greenville crowd once again did not like that one either. Thought it got the zone, not quite. Not the first, and I don't think it'll be the last tonight. 
Yeah, I like that one, and that one's on the outside corner. Down even at one and one. Ragsdale walked and has only played appearance in the first. Makes it that one, fouls it back. And we talked about a lack of home runs they've really had in the uh, in the regular season. They've hit two of them that, that's gotten them this 4 nothing lead. It's funny how baseball works. Oh, yeah. You, you never know. You never know what can happen. It's off the plate. In, in contrast, it's just two completely different styles. Coming into region r regional action, uh, the Hurricanes had 37 home runs as a team. North Greenville has 89. Just the vast contrast in the amount of home runs have hit. But yet, of course, in baseball, as it is, two home runs have gotten them out in front. And that one's a called strike three. As Ragsdale's caught looking. That'll bring up Garrett Bradley. Bradley's 0 for 1, flew out to center field in the first. Cox's first pitch to him misses downstairs. Missed off the plate again. I will note that seemed like a strike about an inning or so ago. <laughs> I will say that. He hit a friendly count here for Bradley. That one fouled, I believe, it was off foot. It was. And do you see how far Zara, Zara's playing? Excuse me, not Zara. Or Roddy's playing out there in right field. Yeah. I mean, you might as well, you know, put a weird number on him and put call him an outfield. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he's. Yeah, he's way out there. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that one. Yeah, clearly off his foot. There's a 2-1. Inside nearly clipped him. Here's Cox's 3-1. That one misses low and in. Ball four. So a one-out walk to Bradley brings up George Davis. Davis grounded into a fielder's choice to end the first inning. Bradley not a threat at all to run over there first. He's only one for two on the year. Did you flinch there? No. Of course not. <laughs> One of our old GAs, Ben Kramer, <laughs> whenever he would work a softball game and mm -hmm. the, the ball went foul and into the net, I mean, he would flinch as much as I've seen any other person. <laughs> he didn't grow up around the game, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I think he grew up a football fan. Yep. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I brought a, my brother and his friend here to a baseball game. It was super regional last year with Columbus State. And we were sitting right over here, like, just behind home plate. And the foul ball came back. I didn't move. My, my brother's friend completely just – I swear he about wet his pants. Like, it was – I'm like, dude, it's a net. You're not yeah. going to get – you're not going to get hit. I promise. I will say the most embarrassing thing for me from working here at North Greenville was a volleyball broadcast. Uh, oh, no. Back then, we did all of the production up in the 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 platform that we mm -hmm. that we have the cameras – at comes and, up empty two and two and uh the ball got blocked and started coming toward the camera well i was looking at the computer uh -huh. and so oh no there was such a delay too that this ball had already dropped for a good like full second as there's a swing and a miss for the out yep second strikeout of the inning for caleb cox now two away and so about a second after that ball stopped and like hit the hit the um the seats i flinched and it just looked so bad because i flinched so far i mean it looked like i had the worst reflexes ever oh, no. it was so embarrassing it's like i promise i'm not that bad I swear. <laughs> first pitch to hegeman is a breaking ball in there for called strike one hegeman all he did last his last time up is launch a solo shot out to right field just beyond the grasp of marek kloop out and right 
Here's the 0-1, that's hit hard up the middle. Vasquez dives, he got it, throw it a second, and Bivens couldn't catch it. Look, it was gonna be a close play either way, but a heck of a play over there by Jalen Vasquez to keep that one from going into the outfield. Yeah, and that'll go down as a base hit. Wouldn't have had a play at first, and yeah. good try there. Just couldn't quite get it. Man, what a stop, wow. though. Laid off for that one, flipped. Try to flip it to Bivens. I think he would have been safe anyway. Yeah. It would have been close. It was close, and it, honestly, the way things going, we probably would have had a review, but <laughs> it definitely looked look like that uh, Bradley was going to slide in safely there at second. But nonetheless, the runners at first and second. They're still two away. Here's a nine-hole hitter, Chris Patterson. The center fielder struck out swinging in the second inning. He's first been swinging out in the right field. Marek Klub, is he going to get there? He will. Patterson hit it hard, but Klub was able to track it down. We head to the bottom half of the third inning. Hurricanes on top, four to nothing. Two, three, and four do up for the Crusaders. Pat Monteith will start things off. That one's on the inside corner. One to Pat slapped right to the first baseman. Edgman, he'll take it to the bag himself. Nice job to smother that one. Pat's retired, one away. So here's John Michael Fail. Fail grounded out to third. Takes that one downstairs. Of course, currently tied all time in Division II ranks. One more, and he'd have the record all to himself. Here's the 1 0. That's hit hard on the ground to short. He'll throw a cross in time, two away. Fell hit it hard, just right at somebody. The two up, two down here for Marek Kloop. First pitch to Marek is hit high down the right field line, but it'll get out of play. Kloop struck out swinging in the first inning. Takes that one low and in. Down even at one and one. Takes that one just inside, two and one. Friendly count here for Marek. Here's the pitch. 
Just off the outside corner, three and one. David Lewis waits on deck. Three one. That's downstairs, ball four. Two out free pass issue to Marek. That'll keep the inning alive for David Lewis. Lewis walked in the first inning. That walk at the time loaded the bases. He was eventually stranded. Lewis, as one of you know, has got a lot of pop on him. 14 home runs on the year. Let's look at that breaking ball for strike one. See if Houston comes with here. First, we're going to get check on Kloop over there first. Kloop, of course, a 20 for 20 perfect in terms of stolen bases on the air is yet to be caught. Another check on him over at first. Crusaders in need of a little two out magic here. Hurricanes trying to keep things right where they're at. Pitch outside, one and one. The one one. Had a healthy hack at that one. Came up empty, however. One and two. And four runs on five hits, no errors for the Hurricanes. No runs on three hits, no errors for the Crusaders. Yeah, three run shot off the bat of Calvin Alexander and a solo shot from Paul Hedgeman. So far, the difference in this one. Here's the one, two. Fouls that one back. We'll do it again. Counts hits at one and two. Just off the plate. Good spot there from Houston. That's what you call a pitcher's pitch right there. If you do swing at it, you're not going to do much with it. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Hit hard on the ground. That's going to get through in the left field for a base hit. Mark moves up 90 feet to second base. And North Grimm's got runners at first and second for Jalen Vasquez. Of course, a tough matchup for Vasquez. Lefty on lefty with a hard throwing lefty at that as well. Vasquez struck out swinging in the first inning. First pitch to him is right there for call strike one. Sits at 0-1. Pitch to Jalen. This is in the turf. Good stop there by Alexander. And this North Greenville offense can definitely be streaky. They, they, when they score, they like to score in bunches. They've had a tough time of scoring late last two games in the conference tournament. And then so far here early on. Here's the 1-1. Popped up. Looks like Alexander behind the plate is going to have enough room, and he does. The Crusaders put runners on first and second, but can't do nothing with it. We play three, four nothing Hurricanes.
Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. Top of the order, two up for the Hurricanes here in the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Blinstrup, Hartsfield, and then Lee. Blinstrup so far is one for two. Single coming in the second. Cox still out there for North Greenville. Of course, in case you missed it, no attack has only went about an inning and two thirds. Gave up four runs. Caleb Cox has come on. Got out of the second inning, and then he worked a scoreless third inning. Count even at one and one. One one breaking ball. Skips up there. Two and one. Cox is two one. Montaigne okay, three and one. That's the one thing if you're North Greenville you don't need is walks. Rush can a regional game. You find yourself down four to nothing. Three one from Cox. That one sent out to right center field. Monteith coming on. He'll make the grab one away. The fly out from Blindstrom brings up Miles Hartsfield. Hartsfield officially 0 for 1. Did did reach on a walk in the first and grounded to a fielder's choice in the second. In case you missed it, Hartsfield launched a three-run shot in the top half of the ninth inning in their opening round loss against Mount Olive earlier today. As he takes that one in the outside corner for strike one. At the time, made it 5-4, made things really interesting. And Corey Lee had a base hit, put the tying run on, but they couldn't do nothing with it, and Mount Olive ended up winning 5-4. Count even at 1-1. One one. One one from Cox. Missed it on the ground to third. Bivens up with it. Throw across in time. Two away. So here's Corey Lee. Lee is yet to be retired today. Officially one for one. A walk in the first and then a single in the second. First pitch to Lee is a breaking ball that stays outside. Crusaders desperate need of a 1-2-3 inning here in the top half of the fourth inning. Here's the 1-0. That's inside. Did it get him? It did not. In fact, it appeared to have gotten home plate umpire Kevin Spivey. So hit a friendly count here for Lee. Here's the 2-0. On the inside corner, 2-1. Another look at that, that previous pitch before that. Two ones, same pitch, same result, 2-2. Two
Two two from Cox. Low it in. Three and two. Payoff pitch from Caleb Cox. Hit hard down the left field line, but hooking foul. Caleb Cox trying to re retire Corey Lee for the first time here tonight. Trying to do so here with the payoff pitch. Let's hit high and deep down the left field line. There's plenty of distance, but it's foul. Count remains full. The 3 2 is not close, and it's a two out walk. So he's on for the third time here tonight. Now bring up the dangerous Calvin Alexander. He's kind of been all or nothing here in game two tonight. A three run shot in the first inning. Then struck out swinging in the second. We got to be careful with him. It's the first pitch to Alexander. Misses way outside. Here's the 1-0. Oh. Bad looking pitch, but just missed. 2-0. Oh. Way out in front of that one is Alexander, 2-1. Looks like Cox took something off of there. Kind of pulled the string. Kim's ready with the 2-1. He's tying out, 3-1. and one. So Cox retired the first two men in order. Had a lengthy battle with Corey Lee before he got a walk. He's now at first base. Now got a 3-1 count here at Alexander. That one clips the inside corner. Strike two. Lee over first will be off with the pitch. Wouldn't be a bad idea from Cox to maybe try to throw over there. And that's exactly what he does. Just to see if he may be taken off a little bit too early. Got to focus on the batter here now. Here's the 3-2. That's upstairs, ball four, back-to-back -back walks. Tough to tell there on the lights down the left field line, but I don't think anyone for North Greenville is warming up. So it appears Caleb Cox will indeed face Reed Ragsdale. Get a close-up look there of Cox and John Michael Fail. One of those I wish I was a good lip reader, but I am not. They're just trying to settle him down. Hey, we got two outs. Let's throw some strikes. Make them earn it. They beat us, they beat us. So be it. Don't give it to them. Cox has done a good job for the Crusaders since coming in. And again, he's still one out away from sending us to the bottom of the fourth. Well, Greenville needs a zero right here. The Hurricanes looking for more. And as Mount Olive learned today, you can't have enough insurance runs because they thought they were fine at 5-0, but again, they, they had enough insurance runs to the point where the Hurricanes got put up a four spot in the top of the ninth, but it just wasn't quite enough. Ready, 
Count sits at 1-0 to Ragsdale. And here's the 1-0. That misses as well. And be careful with this pitch. Hit a friendly count here for Reed Ragsdale. Got to find a zone here for Caleb Cox. That one's popped up into center field. Monteith looks to be under, and he is. And that will finally retire the side. The Hurricanes put two runners on with two outs. They can't bring nothing home. They go to the bottom of the fourth. Four nothing Hurricanes. Bottom third of the order, due up for the Crusader, Crusaders. Zara, Roddy, and then Bivens. Houston back out there for his fourth inning of work. That one misses. Houston, three strikeouts thus far through three innings. That one misses downstairs. Man. With with the third with the strikeout of Zach Zar to begin the top, uh, bottom half of the second inning, I got him to 120 strikeouts on the campaign. Absolutely ridiculous out of Houston. He's falling behind three and zero here to Zach Zara. He has issued nearly 50 walks on the campaign as well. 3-0 taking all the way is Zach. One pitch, one zone here for Zach. Lost that one out to center field. Patterson shading him a little shallow. Makes the play. So here's Bryce Roddy. Roddy has one of those four Crusader hits. Base hit coming in the second. Zara shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a strike on the outside corner. Crusaders have had their chances. They had a couple runners on a couple innings ago, and they also had runners at second and third, nobody out, and then the base is loaded as well in the first inning. Couldn't capitalize on it. And quickly 0-2 to Roddy. See what he comes with here, the 0-2. Got him swinging. So good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Bryce Roddy. That's the fourth strikeout of the ball game for Houston. Landon Powell seems to be taking issue. There was an issue. It did seem like the umpire was about to call time before Houston started the pitch, and then he basically changed his mind. Here's Corey Bivens. Bivens is 0 for 1. Hit it on the screws last time, but it was just right at the left fielder, Blindstrom. Yeah. 
Pardon, you got some strong coffee over there. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. This is 2-1. and one. This will be the 70th pitch for Yusun. It's outside three and one. And they definitely want to try to work his pitch count a little bit, try to see if he can, can get to that bullpen a little bit. Mount Olive had a little bit of success when they got to the bullpen in game one today. And anytime you have a guy like this that averages nearly 12 strikeouts per nine innings, you want to try to get him out of the game as early as possible. That, that'll help with two out walk. Now get things back to the top of the order for Carter Deardorf. Yeah, it's back to the top of the order for NGU. Deerdorf one for two. He's only had two home runs this season, but he can get on base for Pat Monteith. North Greenville could really be in business even with two gone. Takes the first pitch breaking ball for a ball. And Pat Monteith, he's made good contact twice tonight. He's got a double. Hit one hard, just happened to be right at the first baseman. Count here, 1-0 to Deerdorf. It's a good, strong fastball on the outside corner, 1-1. One one. So the Newberry-UNC Pembroke game should finally be getting underway in about five minutes. Yeah, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. That one slapped out of play, one and two. Houston's one strike away from sending us to the fifth. Yeah, got to see a, got to see a picture while I was upstairs of the field earlier today, and yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, when you're sweeping, when you're sweeping water off the field, you know it's it's uh, going to take a while. Yes. Yes. Two's across the board, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Deardorf trying to continue the two out rally for the Crusaders, the pitch. Yeah. Called strike three on the outside corner. Good pitch that time there from Houston. That's his fifth strike out of the ball game. And we played four here in Tigerville. Hurricane still on top, four to nothing. They say college is the best time of your life, but what about what comes next? At Georgia Southwestern State University, you're not just here for the clubs or the campus or the dining hall. You're here for small class sizes, affordable programs, and real world experience. When you come to GSW, you're not just here for college, you're here for your tomorrow. Georgia Southwestern State University, take tomorrow by storm. Start your journey at gsw.edu. Cox out there for the Crusaders as first man to face this inning is Garrett Bradley as he'll foul that, foul that one back. Zero one misses outside one and one. Oh. 
Riley 0 for 1 officially on the day. That's that one up, 2 and 1. Here's the 2 1. That's a good pitch on the outside corner, 2 and 2. Cox come with here as the 2-2. Two -two. That's hit back up the middle. That's going to get through for a base hit. He's able to fist that one just enough We're out of the reach of Jalen Vasquez. That's the sixth base hit of the night for the Hurricanes. You know, I did some research, Alan, and the last time I could really find that the history between North Greenville, they've only played three times. That was when they hooked up for a series at Georgia Southwestern, and North Greenville was able to take two out of three there. So, according to history, that's the only time that these two teams have hooked up. That one's hit high and deep out to the left field. Ooh, it fooled me a little bit. <laughs> Look, it was headed out there. Look, it was hit, hit better than it actually was. It appeared to be off the end of the bat. Here's he hit it high fly ball, and then you see the left fielder come in, and you're just like, oh, crap. <laughs> I will say, though, it was high, though. So here's Paul Hegeman. Hegeman has yet to be retired today. He's two for two. Launched a solo shot to right field, and then it had a base hit in the third inning. The, unfortunately, when you go back and look at our history, team versus team, on our website, it's a little iffy because we're still, still trying to go back and get some additional seasons uh, yeah, that was all I up on find. the website. That yeah, yeah, so... Find. Unfortunately, um, the story is that back in the mid-2000s, uh, the one stat computer they used back then was struck by lightning. Oh. And so we basically lost everything prior to that. Oh, <laughs> so, my. So, yeah, not definitely don't have every year. And then even before that, it, the North Greenville didn't join the NCAA until the year 2000. Right, so, yeah, they were in the NCCAA, right? Right, mm -hmm. and prior to that, uh, NAIA. Mm -hmm. And then before that, they were a junior college. That's right. One one's off the plate, two and one. Joined the Conference Carolinas in 2011. Haven't looked back. Here's the two one. There's a pitch on the outside corner, two and two. And they made their first regional in Atlanta Powell in their first year here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that year. Like a 500-ish record and got made to conference tournament. Yeah, and went on a yeah, run. just that year and, you know, anyone listening from that 2014 year, no offense to them, but, man, the difference between that year and Landon's first year was just unreal. Oh, he went the other way with that one against the shift. That's a base hit in the left. Bradley around second. Thought about going to third, but wisely go retreats. And there's runners at first and second. Yeah. It's the third hit of the night for Hegeman. He's been on fire tonight. Yeah, there's only only so many positives you can take from a eight-win season, which is what that 2014 year was. That was the most <laughs> staggering thing for me. It's like we went from an eight-win team to make to making to a regional. Yeah, in just first the, year. The, the pitching just was not there. I remember uh, one name that comes to mind was Ryan Woodring. Uh, he I remember his ERA being pretty good, and it just. It dropped off so fast after that. They right. just they just were not competitive. That one's chopped third base side and foul. Yeah, but ever since then, though, the 2015, it then took them a couple years to get back, but they ended up winning the conference tournament 2018. And then, actually, this was the first year since that, 28, since that 2017 when Mount Olive won the conference tournament yeah. that someone other than North Greenville won it. Here's the 0-1. One. Low inside, 1-1. One one. Again, strong baseball conference is Conference Carolinas. Regarded, some regarded as the best baseball conference in all of Division II. Here's the 1-1. One one. It's swing and a miss, 1-2. Have four teams getting in, North Greenville and Mount Olive, two teams that are here, here in Tigerville. Belmont Abbey and UNC Pembroke. 
They're over in the Newberry Regional. And I'm restarting it. I still have seen no live stats, so. Yeah, I'm still waiting. Meanwhile, we're in the fifth inning of game number two. Here's the one-two. Upstairs, two and two. Not a bad pitch location. Yep, 65 pitches now for Caleb Cox, 35 of them strikes. Passing looking for his first hit of the night. That one stays up three and two. He's one pitch away from loading the bases. It's at three and two. Big pitch here for Cox. The pitch. Foul out of play. We'll do it again. Always frustrating when you feel like you make a good pitch and the batter just kind of spoils it and knocks it out of play. Okay, you got to come back with it again. Patterson versus Cox. There's the payoff pitch. Hit hard on the ground to short. This could be two. Vasquez underhands it to second. Throw to first. He got him. Vasquez went the route. To, I thought he was going to toss it to him. We, we, we may get a review. We may not. I'm, I'm not seeing anything out of the dugout here. We get another look at it. Vasquez with the underhand throw from that far out. Yeah, but yeah, they got him. Without a doubt, for sure. Vasquez able to turn the 6 4 3 double play. North Greenville needed that. That would be an understatement. <laughs> we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Still 4 nothing Hurricanes. Two, three, and four do it for the Crusaders. Pat Monteith, John Michael Fail, and Marek Kloop. First pitch to Pat, misses outside. Pat's made some good contact. He's one for two, had a double in the first inning. And hit one right on the screws, but it was right at Hegeman over at first. Had a home run hack that time, came up empty. Found out during the break that the Newberry UNC Pembroke game is finally underway. Two outs in the top of the first. We'll keep you posted, posted on that regional throughout this one as well. You saw with a breaking ball in their first strike, one and two. One, two is slapped out of play. All right, we'll stand back in and we'll do the one two once more. That one's out of play as well. That's 80 pitches now for Yusan. Well, it's here in the bottom of the fifth. Gonna have to work some quick innings since they're, they're not gonna use their bullpen tonight. That one's hit right back at Yusan. Good glove work from the lefty. He'll Underhand at the first, four out number one. 
So here's John Michael Fail. Fails 0 for 2 on the day. Ground outs to third and short. And the count is fail at 1 0. Houston's 1 0 pitch. Clips the inside corner, even the count of 1 and 1. Oh, way outside. John Michael Fell currently stands at 75 career home runs. Tied for career best in all of Division II. His next home run, if he can connect. Maybe he'll be in the regional. He would uh, sit alone by himself. All-time home run king in all of Division II. It's not going to be on that pitch. That's way high, 3-1. 18 home runs his first year in 2019. 2020 was the COVID year, the shortened one. He had four home runs. Came back in 2021 with 23 home runs, followed by 16 and 22, and now 14 and 23. And he was trying to do it on that one, came up empty, that count runs yep. full. You got to think here, though, North Greenville needs base runners. Any way they can get them right now. And he's he has his own record. An RBI count is that one's going to be fouled off and out of play. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the way he broke that, I think he would like to redo, but, you know, none, <laughs> nonetheless, you know. Yeah, broke that with 320. So, actually, actually, the when they celebrated that, he actually tied it. Oh, that's he right, did okay. He did break it in the second game with the home run. Not there. He strikes out. Another strikeout for Houston. That's his sixth of the ball game. Here's Marek Loop. He was one of those strikeout victims back in the first. He also walked in the third. The strikeout came at a big time in the first inning. North Greenfield runners at second and third, one out at that time. And you, you knew just how tough coming into this one that Houston was going to be. Even Leonard Powell even stressed about it. He's like, yeah, uh, I'm going to be throwing one of my better guys, no attacks, just because I've, we've got a lot of respect for the uh, lefty that they're going to be throwing at us. There to Kloop is a call strike. As you can tell, a lot of the um, umpires behind the plate didn't agree. Marek Kloop didn't, certainly didn't agree, and Landon Powell's noising his displeasure. Count it two and one. They say honesty is the best policy, I, I guess. <laughs> Not the only way you can say that. Two and one is on a foul tip, two and two. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch cut on and missed, strike three. Another strikeout for Houston, his second of the inning. And his seventh of the ball game. He's been as advertised for sure tonight. Big time, he is. He is putting on a clinic out there right now. And nothing doing for the Crusaders. They go one, two, three here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Four nothing Hurricanes as we head to the sixth.
New pitcher for NGU is number 35, the junior left-handed pitcher from Orlando, Florida, Matthew Tobinsey. Tobinsey, it's been a great season for him, a 2.75 ERA, 4-0 for the season. This will be his 15th appearance, 19 and two-thirds innings pitched. It's just six earned runs for the year, 17 strikeouts, six walks, and opponents batting 241 against him. Well, they're going to need to continue. Need him to continue to be really good because they're going to have to hold things right here at four nothing. Again, the offense has been in a rut a little bit here for the Crusaders, and again, you just got to credit. I mean, you knew Houston was going to be tough, and when you when Tagus came out there, he struggled a little bit. You know, only going an inning and two thirds, giving up four runs, all of them which coming on those two home runs that we talked about from Calvin Alexander and then Paul Hegeman. He's, he's been a thorn inside for everybody tonight. He's three for three on the night. He's due up third here this inning. He's talking his first man. faces Garrett Bradley. Strike on the outside corner. Yeah, North Greenville was expecting the lefty. The fact that they have four lefties in their lineup, they knew it was coming. Landon Powell was talking about that um, in the regional meeting yesterday, that they were most likely going to be facing the lefty, so they were prepared. Yeah. And yet he is still out there just mowing North Greenville down right now. Yeah, seven strikeouts through five innings. The only thing for positive for North Greenville, you're trying to maybe run his pitch count just a little bit. And again, I don't think he's coming out of the game anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think so either. Count it two and one. Now it's slapped down the left field line, but out of play. Not even at two and two. Matthew Thompson on the mound, the, mound, the man they call Chewy. I don't know if you got to look at his little goatee <laughs> he's got going on there. It makes sense though, they call him Chewy. Here's the two two. That's poked. Mel Jalen Vasquez dies. Did he make the play? Yes, he did. Jalen Vasquez almost pulled off a couple of miraculous plays tonight. That one he pulls off and the diving grab for out number one. Great play there from Jalen Vasquez, as that'll bring up George Davis. Davis is officially 0 for 3. He did reach on a fielder's choice in the first. He's first pitch hacking. Fouls it up, fail, can't find it, but I believe it's out of play anyway. This is uh, Hartsfield. Oh, I started down on the wrong part of the list. <laughs> yep. That was you made, that you made you made me you made me second guess. <laughs> so I had to wait Blame for him. on the long night. <laughs> oh, that one's ripped. Oh, nearly took off Chewy's head, and Vasquez nearly caught it on the way by. But it's into center field, a base hit for Hartsfield. It's the eighth base hit of the night for the Hurricanes. And you got to check Tobinsey's. Blood pressure out there. I mean, that's, that one came right back at him. Here's Corey Lee. Well, excuse me, I didn't mean to. 0 and 1. Lee's 1 for 1. His base hit coming in the second. He's also walked in the first and the fourth. Check over there at first on Hartsfield. There's the 0 1 to Lee. Good stop there by Fail. And regardless of this outcome, that we know the matchup tomorrow night is going to be North Greenville and Mount Olive. Now, if this result holds, that'll be an opportunity for Mount Olive to eliminate the Crusaders from postseason play. And that'll really put Mount Olive in the driver's seat. That one 
off the glove a fail, but not far enough for Hartsville to advance. Now you want to talk about a shock if Mount Olive were to eliminate North Greenville this early yeah. in the regional tomorrow before even the final day. Yeah, team that went 44-6 and six in the regular season and then two and out in the conference tournament, then two and out in the NCAA regionals. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty disastrous. Yeah, this team was at one point on a 17-game winning streak in the middle of the season. Did lose three in a row after that, two to Mount Olive and then one to Lenore Rhine. Thought that that was the, the dark side of the season. So they turned things around after that, but well, even then, going into the last regular season series against Southern Wesleyan, I mean, r runs were, other than the opener, the, were not hard to come by. I mean, they scored 13 and 19. Things figured things were going hot right in, into the postseason, and then things just have not turned out that way. Yeah, the first first game in that season, in that series was competitive. It was 3 to nothing, but then mm -hmm. North Greenville went on to shut out SWU in the second game as well, 15 to nothing. And then a more competitive game that, it seemed like we were talking about football it. game. We were talking about it earlier, but like it just seemed like both both teams were kind of ready to get it over with. SWU was it was their final game of the season as they didn't make it into the conference tournament. Right. North Greenville was just kind of looking to get their runs and take care of things. That was a 19 to 12 game. Yeah, that good old football score in a baseball game. Yeah. Your mound visit here. And you know it's always a concern coming off of a, a national championship year. Yeah. Is there that, that hangover effect? You know, it's just it's just hard to get as as motivated and to keep that momentum going. Not saying that that's been the issue for this team, because I mean as they showed early on in the year, you know, that was not the case, but just not firing on all cylinders late lately. And that's the thing about baseball when it comes tournament time. It's usually it's not usually the best team. It's just even in basketball, for instance, like basketball and baseball. When it comes tournament time, who's the hottest team? Who's yeah. the team that's like and, scorching hot at the moment? And that's how it is at every level. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's Calvin Alexander, one for two on the day. Had the three-run bomb in the first inning. Got Hartsfield over at second, and you got Lee over at first. That's downstairs, 2 0. Got to be very careful of this pitch to Alexander. If you're, if you're top and see the 2-0. Had a hack at that one just a tad late. And if Alexander can kind of guide one to the right side, just a 15-foot hopper to most definitely score a run. Tried to shoot that way, fouled it off two and two. Count even at two and two. Pitch from Tobin, see? Swung on and missed strike three. Big pitch there from Chewy. Second out of the inning. So here's Reed Ragsdale. Ragsdale's 0 for 2. We're going to get a pitch hitter for Reed. Up, 
First pitch fastball. Didn't quite catch the inside corner. Here's Hunter Foster. Counts hits at 1-0. Okay, that one fouls it back over the net, one and one. Sater's in the home half of the sixth inning. We'll try to get the rally started with David Lewis, then Jalen Vasquez and Zach Zara. Bryce Roddy and then Corey Bibbins to follow if they were to get down there. That'll be in the bottom half of the inning. Still got work to do, do here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Back to the net, 1-2. and two. Hartsfield at second. Lee at first. Here's the 1-2. Upstairs, two and two. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch. That's poked out into right field. Marek Kloop going back. He makes the grab. Hunter gave that a ride, but Mark Kloop was able to track it down to retire the side. The Hurricanes put two runners on, but can't bring anything across. Here's the bottom half of the sixth inning, still 4 nothing. You're searching for a place where you can distinguish yourself, a place where you can pursue what you want to do and who you want to be. At North Greenville University, you will earn more than just a degree. You'll grow your faith, develop relationships with new friends and faculty, serve others while experiencing a vibrant student life. Find your place at North Greenville University where Christ makes the difference. First pitch swinging is David Lewis down the right field line, but uh, get out of play. Bottom of the six here in Tigerville. Hurricane clean to a four nothing lead. They got three in the first and then one in the second. That one's laced out to right field. But coming in to make the grab is Garrett Bradley, one away. And even though when sometimes you feel like the Crusaders hit it hard, it just happens to be right at somebody. Sometimes it goes that way. So here's Jalen Vasquez. Vasquez is 0 for 2, struck out swinging in the first and then fouled out behind the plate in the third. It's that one high in the air to right field. Garrett Bradley ranging to his right, just shy of the warning track, makes the grab, two away. Vasquez just got under that one. Back-to-back -back fly outs to right. Yeah, 
Well, this is not what North Greenville wanted. Three pitches, two outs for Houston. A guy that it's obvious he has it. If you're North Greenville, you want him out of the game as soon as possible. And swinging yep. at the first pitch is not going to do that. Zaron that takes the first pitch. Houston, seven strikeouts tonight. Came into this one with 117 on the year. Obviously now up to 124. Just around to show Ooh. Bund. It looks like it got a piece of Alexander behind the plate. Empire's going to give him a little bit of time. There are some players kind of standing around in the Georgia Southwestern bullpen, but nobody warming up. So, I mean, they're going to stick with them for probably at least one more inning. Yeah, it looks like he's definitely he's definitely going to have enough pitches to go through at least the seventh. Here's the 0-2. On the fist, should be an easy play for Lee, and it is. And that will retire the side. Another easy inning for Houston. Three up, three down. Head to the seventh, 4-0. Head to the top half of the seventh inning. Matthew Thomas, he's still on the mound for the Crusaders. Face Garrett Bradley, scores around the bunt. going to pop it over to Gargantuan. Old press box down the, uh, <laughs> over the North Greenville dugout. Ah, uh, the memories. Still remember when you would put a camera outside the window of that thing. Uh, that, was only, that was only a few times when it, when it was, when it was raining. Been, but, yeah, yeah that was, uh, it was not ideal at all. <laughs> There's a strike quickly, 0 and 2. And believe it or not, that was a step up from what we had before. <laughs> really? That setup in the yeah they before before it was just the the press box was tiny. There wasn't even enough room there for the for the scorer, and Ooh. so for our first the first time we hosted a regional they opened it up there was a closet right beside the the original yeah i guess you could call it a press box mm -hmm. and so they opened it up for that regional oh boy and so we were there for a couple years that strike three riddles retired on strikes yeah definitely the advancements that they've made here at north greenville <laughs> come a long way haven't we oh yeah I think that's what happens when what we that's what winning does, right? You don't miss the railroad ties, uh, the seating. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I remember the first time I called something. I was out there in the right yep. center field. Yep. That was interesting. That's where our entire setup was for quite some time, and it did its job. You know, we made the most out of it. I remember I heard a horror story because it was the regional year before mm -hmm. that in 2018. And the, I heard there was a bunch of lightning delays and oh, all yeah. kind of stuff, you it know, kind just, of stuck out there. It was 
I, now I was scoring games back then, so I wasn't actually out there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, the broadcast crew, our producer Will, he uh, oh boy. he actually commentated, helped commentate some of those games. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, quite an endurance run. <laughs> There's good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Mr. George Davis. He's down on strikes for the second time in the ball game. Third strikeout for Matthew Tobinsey. Two up, two down here for Paul Hegeman. Crusaders looking to try to retire Hegeman for the first time today. All he's done is go three for three with a homer. Lefty on lefty matchup. Downstairs 1-0. Yeah, just to add on to how much this place has developed over the years, it, Ashmore, Ashmore Park didn't even have lights until the 2014 season. Oh, wow. Yeah. Going over the top of that one, one and one. Is there a reason why they don't play a, like, a lot of night games during a regular season? Uh, I think it's mostly for travel reasons. Well, I thought that one spoke in the air to left field. Going back is left fielder Zara, and he will make the play about a step or so onto the warning track. And to the retire of the side. So one, two, three, go. The Hurricanes here in the top of the seventh. It's time to stretch here in Tigerville. Crusaders got some work to do. Eight, nine, and one, do it for the Crusaders here in the bottom of the seventh inning. You know, three run shot from Calvin Alexander in the first inning, and then a solo shot from Paul Hegeman. All have been all the runs that the Hurricanes have needed thus far. Houston on the mound for the Hurricanes has been absolutely phenomenal for them. He ran into a little bit of traffic early on, but he, he has settled in nicely, and the Crusaders. Especially his last, these middle innings have had a lot of trouble. And so that pitch, he's now at 100 pitches. The righty's hit on the ground. Middle second baseman fields it on the hop. Lee over there in, in time, one away. Yeah, going back to what we were talking about in the last inning, uh, mm -hmm. our our associate athletic director, Dustin Fools, brought up a good point that early on in the season, it's, it's a bit nippy at night. It, so. that, that, is, that does make sense, <laughs> yes. But, um, when it's cold, you want to try to play it when, when the sun's out. I, I get that. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, travel has to do with it, too. I mean, a midweek game, you know, you play a team and they head right back to, to where they came from and then – and it's like your you know, D1 school's got all the resources and stuff like that. Yeah, the D2 yeah. level, you don't really And have then it. on Friday, you don't want to play a night game because then the two teams have to turn around and play a doubleheader on Saturday. So just not really ideal typically. Now, sometimes sometimes we do have the, the occasional night game or go to Floor Field in Greenville and have a neutral game. So right. there, the last couple years have been against Lander and stuff yep. like that, yeah. Count even at 1-1 one one to Bivens. Took something off that time. Bivens over to swung over the top of it. One and two. Houston's got seven strikeouts thus far through six and a third innings. Trying to get his eighth right here. The one-two. Bivens just got a piece of that one to stay alive. Right 
Well, the one bit of good news for NGU is that there is some action in the Hurricane bullpen. 105 pitches now for Houston. 106 misses outside, two and two. That is a welcome sight for, for North Greenville. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Finally, uh, someone warming yeah, up. Yeah, Usum has been dialed in, especially since about the second or third inning on. He's been nearly unhittable. That one's hit high in the air to center field. Going back is Patterson. He's at the wall. The wall. It is off the wall. Bivens around second. He's on his way to third. Third is going to come into third. Bivens is going to slide in safely at third. Maybe that's something that the Crusaders needed then. Maybe that'll get them going a little bit. One out triple off the fence for Corey Bivens. Tell you what though, Chris Patterson deserves a lot of credit. That was a heck of a throw. It, yeah, that was. That thing just a couple of bounces and it was right yeah. on the money over I, there at third base. It was base. close to being a close play. It was. For the Crusaders, that get things back to the top of the order for Carter Deerdorf. He's one for three on the day. Makes the first pitch fastball for strike one. Sater's 90 feet away from cracking the scoreboard for the first time here in the regional. This has been a tough nut to crack for them today. Pitch slapped out of play down a third base side, 0-2. And then infield is back. At the very least, you want to try to get a run. Try to put a ground ball just enough to get it past the pitcher to at least get the run home. Try to put something up there on that scoreboard for the Crusaders. 0-2. Way up, upstairs. It's out from Alexander. That was really close to getting all the way to the backstop. Yeah, the Canes not even playing corners in, so they are more than happy to trade a run for an out right now. They only need eight more outs before the North Carolina can get four runs. That one's out to left field. I should at least get one home. Lister makes the catch, and tagging from third and heading up plateward is Corey Bivens, and North Greenville's on the scoreboard. Starting to get a little bit of the chant going up in here for <laughs> Mr. Pat Monty. It took six and two thirds innings, but the North Greenville's finally on the scoreboard with their first run. Monteith is one for two in the ball game. See it coming in the first. It was a double down the left field line. That one skips up there. M Monteith leads the. Team in home runs. He's got 17 of them on the year. Pitch to him. Misses downstairs. After that chain he got, he hits. If he were to connect on one, this place might go nuts. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. Hmm. Had a home run to hack at a ball that was... Probably a little bit high. Yep. Just say more than a little bit. I know. I, I was, <laughs> I know, I was I know. trying to give it a bit of a <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But, yeah, he, he definitely wanted it there. 2-1, misses downstairs, 3-1. and one. <laughs> Saves will definitely take a walk. We've got John Michael fail on deck. 3-1. It's not close, ball four. So the inning continues for John Michael Fail. He's looking for his first hit of the night. It'd be a good time to get it, wouldn't it? If you're the Crusaders. Yeah, I think they would take it. <laughs> if anything, with this inning continuing, you're ramping up the pitch count for Houston. You're getting pretty close to territory. You can almost guarantee that he's probably not going to come back for the eighth inning. Yeah, I mean, I... I can't imagine. I mean, he's at 117 now. I can't imagine him coming back out for another inning. I've you never some, know. I've seen some but crazy yeah, things. yeah. I mean, I remember when North Green was facing elimination against Katab in the 2019 Super Regional? I forget his name, but he went 140 something pitches in nine innings. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. Dips there. Good eye from Fail. Anyone in need of some good fortune right now is John Michael Fail.
One is chopped on the ground, third base side, but foul, one and two. Now, if you're John Michael Fail, you've got to protect the plate. Know, as much, know he wants a home run. And you know he wants it bad. He wants that record for himself. But, need man, base runners. right now, you yeah, exactly. You need base hits and base runners. That one's no, that's going to be a tough play. Houston's going to have to come and field it. Throw over to first is in time. Houston does a great job of fielding his position right there to retire the side. North Greenville gets on the scoreboard. We played seven here in Tigerville. Hurricanes on top of the Crusaders, 4-1. to one. New pitcher for NGU is number 31, Matthew Murphy, a redshirt junior from 96 South Carolina, transfer from USC Upstate. Murphy comes in with a six ERA. This will be his 12th appearance. 12 innings pitched, 14 hits allowed, eight earned runs, 11 walks, seven strikeouts, and opponents batting 275 against him. And they'll face the 9-1-2 and two portion of the Hurricanes lineup. Chris Patterson, then Jake Blenstrup, and then Miles Hartfield. Head to the top of the eighth, 4-1 Georgia Southwestern. You know, looking at this game, Mattel's got to be sitting in their hotel room watching this game, just knowing the, and mouth, like foaming at the mouth just to get an opportunity to eliminate their arch, their arch rival, really, <laughs> on their home floor tomorrow. Home. Yeah, you know, they'd love to. The, the Mount Olive coaching staff is right below us, uh, right near the field, so they are definitely getting their scouting reports. So they're going to be well prepared for tomorrow. That's getting ports, but I'm pretty sure that they know. They're probably they're going to they, be they know. they're going to be facing <laughs> Reese Fields. Like they're, they're, yeah. that's going to be a foregone conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if the results from this game hold. And again, Crusaders tried to do that in the conference tournament. Went to Reese Fields in the 0-1 game, and didn't work out for them at that point either. So, and still got plenty of time left in this one. Got six outs left. That one's skied out of play to the right side, one and two. I say plenty, but, you know, six outs, that's that's, probably, that's definitely not plenty, but you get my drift. Yeah. Patterson's 0 for 3 on the day. A strikeout, a fly out, and then a 6-4-3 double play in the fifth. One, two's outside. Quick update, Newberry and UNC Pembroke still nothing, nothing in the top of the fourth. Yeah, Newberry does not have a hit yet. 
Here's the 2-2. Got him with the breaking ball. Good pitch there. One away. Other than Takis being a little off tonight, he gave up the two home runs tonight that resulted in all four runs for the Hurricanes. After that, the pitching has come in. Cox, Tobinsey, as well, just it's, it's overall they've done a good job of keeping the Hurricanes right where they're at. That one misses 1-0. Yeah, something that goes under the radar is the fact that Hurricane defense has been very good. They have. That one's hit on the ground. Roddy playing in practically short right field. Barely gets the fast-moving Blenstrom. Blenstrom got down the line in a that hurry. some good speed. Yeah, you got to remember, Roddy is playing way out there. And that one wasn't exactly hit particularly hard, so he had to come in a little bit of ways. Nonetheless, two up, two down. So here's Miles Hartsfield. He's one for three on the day. Takes that one downstairs. One oh misses. Again downstairs, two and oh. Hit a friendly count here for Hartsfield. Fastball off the plate. Hartsfield a speedy man on the base pass, so 16 for 22 in the stolen base department. One pitch away from putting him on. Hartsfield thought he that was ball four, but home plate umpire Kevin Speavy said, nope, that was strike one, three and one. Here's 3-1. That one's popped up. Who's going to want this one? This is going to be Zach Zara calling for it, and he makes the grab. 1-2-3 inning for the Hurricanes here in the top of the eighth inning. 4-1. to one. Bottom of the eighth, four to one Hurricanes. We got Marek Kloop, David Lewis, and then Jalen Vasquez to follow. Kloop has yet to put the ball in play so far today. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. He did reach in the third on a wall. Getting Houston back out there with uh, over 120 pitches now. Not surprised, you know, teams that are facing elimination, they'll ride whatever's working no matter what the pitch count is. And he's been locked in. It's not like he, I mean, uh, he had a little bit of a blimp last inning with the Corey Bivens triple to dead center field, but other, other than that and then a little bit of trouble early on, he's really not had much. That's inside, nearly hit Clute. When you said that, all, the, all I could think of was last game of the year, Brent can't hold anything back now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Hurricanes are hoping it's not their last game of the year. 2-1, 
popped up on the infield. Hartsfield calling for it, and he makes the grab. There's David Lewis. Lewis is one for two. Hit the ball hard twice. They hit in the third, and then he lined out to right field. Looking for base runners, any point. That one's hit high and deep out to right field. Lewis says he got it, and with the bat flip to both. That ball is gone. A solo shot for David Lewis. For Lewis, a home run number 15 on the year, RBI number 53. And North Greenville's now down four to two. Got a fast spot on the outer half. Um, looks like the umpires are gonna come together here. I've seen like, maybe like maybe like an excessive celebration or something like yeah, that. I I, I guess my, that's my only guess. He's trying to get the team fired up. I mean, yeah, he did have a bat flip. I saw him right here, and I, he, once he hit it, he knew it was gone. Yeah, he did have a bat flip, and they're gonna they're gonna bring Landon Powell out and have a word with him. <laughs> and I don't think Landon Powell any wanted wanted any part of that. Guessing they gave the team a warning. That's something that you've seen NCAA do a little bit, but th thankfully it's only a warning, I, I believe. So he, I don't. He, I think the second time it happens, it'll be an ejection. Yeah. Look, I'm not a fan of that. I. Like, it's just like, hey. These are college kids, man. Let them be college kids. Either way, I don't care who it is, whatever team it is, but it, either way. There's a strike. Maybe that will fire them up a little bit. Yeah. And if you basically said, Coach Powell, I've, I've, I've had enough. I'm guessing it's issuing a warning or something to the coach took foul over well, there. I thought they already had a warning though, so not sure. Interesting. Yeah, just like postseason baseball. Come on, let's get it going. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. With another beautiful breaking ball. Yeah, he just. You wonder if it was the bat flip or the fact that he, he turned around and yelled. It was at the dugout, but maybe it could be, you know, maybe it could be considered, you know, yelling in the direction of the catcher or the umpire. You know, not exactly I sure. Mean, he was but clearly, like, yelling towards his dugout. Right, right. He didn't even right. look at the other dugout. That one's fouled away one and two. I mean, you saw it with, uh, you saw it with Florida when the uh, – when their guy got ejected for celebrating and then the next guy comes in and just hits a home run then just acts like a robot all the way it's down like, guys, the back so to what? the dugout. It's testosterone. Let's move on. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Here's the one-two. High and out, two and two. Green will try and build off that momentum from the David Lewis opposite field shot a moment ago. Two-two to Vasquez. Just got a piece of that one to stay alive. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. That's hit on the ground. That's going to get through into right field for a base hit. First base hit of the ball game for Jalen Vasquez, and now the tying run will come to the plate in form of Zach Zara. That's the seventh hit of the ball game for the Crusaders. They've almost caught up to the Hurricanes at this point. Hurricanes still currently lead that department eight to seven.
Here's Lane is going to call an offensive timeout and have a conversation with number 99. Get a pitch hitter. Yep. Looks like it still hasn't seen who's going to emerge over there. Well, that's going to be number 28, Andrew Kaminsky. So Zach Zara will be taken down, and Andrew Kaminsky will come to the plate. Kaminsky, a transfer from Liberty University. He's got some pop, he, especially towards right field. And of course, ele electing for the lefty on righty matchup. Trying to play the matchup here. First pitch to Kaminsky, misses downstairs at 1 0. 133 pitches now for Usen. Wow. Foul back and off the pole. There is some action going on down there in the bullpen down the right field line. I think they got dual guys going. They got a righty and a lefty down there. Count even at one and one to Kaminsky. Here's the pitch. That's hit hard out in the center field. Is that going to hang up? It'll get down. Vasquez around second on his way to third. He's going to slide in there head first. And there's runners on the corners for the Crusaders. Thought for a second that ball was going to hang up for Chris Patterson out there in center field, but he elected to play that one on a hop. Yeah, there's been a couple plays out there in center field for Patterson. He's he's had to kind of play it conservative. Obviously, again, if that ball gets by, that clears the bases. And so it's at least you know, a triple for Kaminsky. If that, yeah, if that gets I by mean, him, and it doesn't touch. He the definitely ball. could have dove for the ball there, but chose not to, and that's probably the wise decision. Obviously, depending on the next couple of at bats, we'll find out whether right. that was a good yeah, decision. Yeah, we'll find or out not. with hindsight, you know. So, Bryce Roddy's the next scheduled hitter. I will say, you got to give props to Andrew Kaminsky, man. It feels like every time his name's called upon in a pitch hit scenario or a spot start here and there, he seems like he always just delivers, and he's always, he always brings to that pop and that energy. And so you yeah. got to give credit where credit's due for him as well. You know, yeah. again, a lengthy meeting, and there is action in the bullpen. We haven't seen a sign. I would be He's probably going to stick with him here if I had to guess, especially if it is Roddy that comes to play once the lefty and lefty matchup. Now, they do have a lefty in the bullpen. That looks like we'll have a – Pitch runner for Kaminsky at first. Yep. Kaminsky did his job. Hits are now even in the hit column, by the way, 8-8. Eight, eight. Zach Cower will be the pitch runner for Andrew Kaminsky. Bears are going to leave Houston in there. Runners on the corners for the Crusaders here in a 4-2 ball game here in the bottom of the eighth. Roddy's one for one for three on the day. Base hit back in the second. Be big for the Crusaders if he can come up with one right here. The first pitch to him. Hooks that one down the left field line, but out of play. We talked about it, especially early in the season, Trey Dyson coined these kids the cardiac kids. No matter what, they seem to always want to give you a finish. Count at 0-1 to Roddy. Houston well over 130 pitches to this point through seven and a third innings. The 0-1. That's in there, strike two. Corey Bivens waits on deck. Got a battle here if you're Roddy. Houston trying to put him away right here. The pitch. That's hit on the ground. This could be two. They got to be quick with it. Over second for one low throw. Head first dive. He's safe. Coming in to score is Vasquez. It's four to three. Let's go, 
So we got a one run ball game here in Tigerville. Again, we're gonna have another meeting with the umpires here. Wonder Only thing I can think of is a possible interference of some kind. I mean, you look at that right there. I mean, he's, he's in the slide path. He didn't go out of his way. The, from what I saw there, it didn't look like he went too far out of his yeah, way. It looked like he was right in the he, slide lane. As long didn't as you, affect the throw at all. As long as you can reach for the base, yeah, then like you're a, okay, and they are going to challenge it. Or it, I'm not sure if it's a coach's challenge, but it is going to be a review. I think the umpires want to take a look yeah. at this. That's basically what I saw from there. Mm -hmm. That did not look like anything that should be runner's interference. Yeah. Now, I, I did kind of catch a little glance at it. I don't know if you want to run that back. I know he's probably – Producer's probably, probably talking to the umpires yep, right now. Yep. But. I'm sure we can take another look once the uh, review is over with. That review that I saw there, it didn't look like there was anything that was really egregious on him. I don't know. Unless they're reviewing something else, but I can't imagine what else it would have been. I mean, unless I, there unless was I some kind the head of first slide and the first not illegal. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I respect that for my. I mean, that was a hard hit ball at the middle there too. Yeah, like that yeah. Was, that's a usual routine. I, I don't think I've ever seen someone get down the line so fast. And obviously, this is, you know, obviously a huge time in this ball game. Yes, it so. is. It's a difference between a, you know, a two-run game and going into the ninth inning versus a one-run game. And I'm telling you right now, Landon Powell is going to be hot. He's already been, uh, you know, very, very close at times. Yeah. You know, and so if if they call this an out and a runner's in, well, here's the thing. Here's what makes the leash even shorter. You're not allowed to argue a call that's reviewed. So <laughs> if he says anything, then yeah. that's going to be I quite a, the issue. Yeah, so. I, have a, uh, I have an idea of what's going to happen. I'm just not going <laughs> to say it on air. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. I, I can't imagine that anything would be overturned, but you never know. Just have to wait and find out. That's just it. You never know. You're holding your breath. <laughs> e yeah. Either side, you're holding your breath. You're like, if you're the pitcher, you're using your mindset. It's like, okay, you got to approach this like it's a 4-3 ball game. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you know, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to be bailed out here. You, if they do not overturn the call, you're going to have to come out there and get your mi mindset right. Yep. So. Now, the scoreboard here at the field still says 4-2, to two, so they're they're waiting to yeah. find out whether this call is going to stand our or not. Our so. staff guys have already pulled the trigger. So. Yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping, uh, you know, yeah. a lot of North Korean probably hopes they're right. Oh, here comes the call. I thought it'd be interesting. Wow. Okay. So it, they, they got us with that one. Yeah. Okay. So they called the guy out at second, which it, it, is, is the right call on there leave the guy at first the, so there was no runners in the, the whole place was about to go insane if, hey, so so he even put his hands up to be like hold on <laughs> so it might have just been them making sure that the out was was there at second it been, that might have been all it was this is why we need like something with football where we have a <laughs> microphone where they can tell us what they were looking at yeah. anyway moving on yeah the nine hole hitter Corey Bivens he's the go-ahead run right now that was kind of crazy. You could literally see the umpire go, hold on, hold on. Let me get the whole thing He's out. He's safe over here. <laughs> A one count to Corey Bivens. One for two. He tripled an inning ago. Okay, so just found out from our producer they were reviewing whether there was interference or not. Okay. I figured that was the only way. That yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the only thing that really made well, the sense. the neighborhood play, He's probably, you're, you're going to rule him out of there at second base. Game 4-3. Roddy over there at first. No one's high, one and one. Corey Bivens is not your average nine-hole hitter either for North Greenville. 11 home runs on the year, 47 runs batted in. And Will, after the next pitch, if we could take a look at it one more time, if you still have it, just, just out of curiosity. Down here at one and one. Ooh, came with the changeup, swung over the top of it. So here we go. We'll take a quick look at this. So so we were correct originally, just making sure that there was no interference. And, yeah, I mean, you can see he can clearly go for the base. Yeah. The only thing I can think of, well, maybe they were thinking he slid too early. Yeah. Uh, uh, Here's the one-two. Stays alive. Cow remains at one-and-two to Corey Bivens. 
Some people around here call him the best nine hole hitter in the country. <laughs> The battle here, the one two. And so that one to stay alive. Don't you love postseason baseball? <laughs> you might be keeping count at this point at home, but Houston, 143 and counting. Um, if they are somehow able to survive, to, and he's going to, oh my goodness. He's going to need an ice bath. Here's the one two. Got him swinging. Big strike out there for Houston. He's through eight innings and 144 pitches later. The North Greenville does pick up two runs. In large part to a solo shot from David Lewis and then base hits from Jalen Vasquez and Andrew Kaminsky. We head to the top of the ninth in a one-run ball game. We head to the top half of the ninth inning, 4-3, Georgia Southwestern. And Georgia Southwestern trying to get through the bottom of the ninth inning to at least stay around for another day. And again, they would move, if they were to win this game, they would move to the Saturday. Again, what time that, that would be determined. Here's Corey Lee. First pitch swing back up the middle. Roddy placed perfectly, throw over to first in time, one away. Yeah, Georgia Southwestern, if they are to survive here, obviously they're looking for insurance runs and they got to hold it down in the bottom of the ninth, got to deal with North Greenville's top of the order. If they are able to do it, they'll advance to Saturday. Guaranteed as again, North Greenville and Mount Olive will be the only game tomorrow. As that's a breaking ball in there for a strike. And then there will be two games on Saturday. Here's the 0-1. Another breaking ball in the outside corner, knee high, 0-2. Two way upstairs, one and two. It's like all of a sudden Newberry has gone on a tear in the fifth. Their lead at five to nothing. Yeah, five nothing, a five spot in the bottom of the fourth. Win from having no hits in the first three innings to exploding here in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the one two. Breaking ball. Didn't quite catch the plate, two and two. Home, home cooking behind home plate didn't like to call, but it looked <laughs> like it was outside. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Outside. From 0-2 to 3-2. and two. The 3-2. Didn't get the call on the outside corner. Ball four. So one out walk there to Calvin Alexander.
Masters are going to get another pitch hitter. Could be going to be number 27, Jared White. Opportunity for Jared White to get a base hit because, again, with North Greenville creeping right on the door, they've scored one in the seventh, two in the eighth. They're knocking on the door. Needing some insurance runs are the Hurricanes. Count it 0-1. It's outside one and one. Usually, we'd see North Greenville in a shift. It looks like they're trying to keep things where they are. That way, they can try to turn a double play. Here's the one one downstairs, two and one. Again, top of the order, duel for the Crusaders in the bottom of the ninth. It'll be. Deardorf, Pat Monteith, and then John Michael Fail. Here's the pitch. And this is as well, three and one. Walks in the postseason, just they really do you no favor sometimes. Yeah. Walk the previous hitter, and he's gone three and one here to White. Three one. What did he have a hack at that one? Fouled it back three and two. Jared White, a 288 hitter coming in. Oh, that swing. If, if, look, he was trying to hit it back to, to downtown Greenville <laughs> with that swing. Only has one home run on the season, but definitely has the swing to put one out of here based on that one. Anything you can get out to right field has got a chance here. Pitch. Didn't quite get the call. You can tell John Michael fell behind the plate, wanted that one. I've, I've learned tonight that anything on that else, on that, that corner, either way it goes, it's going to be sometimes you just don't know which way he's going to call it. But that one, from up here, it looked like it was off the plate. It was tough to fully tell. We're kind of adjacent a little bit. We're not exactly right behind home plate. So here's Garrett Bradley. What do you think Fails telling him here? Just throw strikes. Do your thing. Right. Simple enough. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's tough. Like, I mean, it, well, this is what really got them in trouble in the first place. They got two back-to-back -back walks of uh, Miles Hartsfield and Corey Lee in the first, which ended up leading to the Calvin Alexander three-run shot in the first inning. That gave him the 3 nothing lead, and it looks like he was just – John Michael Phelps just buying time. Yeah. Not surprised, like, you know, in, in a regional game, you, you got to have a short leash at this point. It's very rare that Landon Powell comes out there and just has a conference. He's usually out there to make a move. He, he has at times. He, he'll at do time. that sometimes in a critical situation, but he will with time. the bullpen, like two, two different pitchers were warming up in the bullpen, so figured that there was going to be a change there. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lefty. Or maybe that's, that might not be the case. Looks like it's going to be Dawson Taylor. Yep, so Dawson Taylor, the redshirt junior, 6'1", 210 pounds, from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Taylor comes in with a 3.47 ERA, 1-0 for the year. 21, now 22 appearances, 23 and one-third innings pitched. Nine earned runs, 19 walks, 34 strikeouts. Opponents batting just 159 against him. He's got to come in and throw strikes here because 
You got runners at first and second, only one out. Greenville trying to keep things right where they're at. You feel pretty good because, again, you, you said you said it was over 40, 140 some odd pitches after eight innings. Incredible effort from him. There is action in, in their bullpen. I'd be shocked if he comes out for the ninth. But I, I, then again, I, I've, I've already be been proven. By anything. I've already been proven wrong once, so you know I'll let you be wrong this time. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I was told that the, um, before the games and stuff today that. They, they, they ride those two starting pitchers that they had. They had McCollum in the first game today, and and then they have use on here tonight. They will ride those pitchers. I mean, McCollum went over 120 some of pitches. They only took him out just because Mount Lawful was getting to him a little bit. Houston, uh, North Carolina got to him a little bit there. It'll be interesting to see who they come with out of the bullpen as well. So, if they in, do indeed like to go to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. I say I'd be shocked, but really and truly I wouldn't be. Is there anything that's happened so far today? I mean, first game we had nearly had a comeback. We got down five runs in the ninth inning. North Greenville's making this is an interesting one here in the top of the ninth. All right, Piers, we're ready to go. Dawson Taylor stands in to face Garrett Bradley. Bradley's one for three on the day. First pitch to him. One thing's for sure, Dawson Taylor's got a lively fastball. Now it's just the ability to be able to command it. And this is as well, 2-0. Oh. One thing that did definitely hurt the Crusaders has been the free passes issue tonight. I mean, quite a few of them. Oh, that's not close either. Three and out. Here's the 3 0. Uh, he's going to walk. Oh, base is loaded. That's the tenth free pass issued on the night by North Greenville pitching. Alexander at third. All these guys over there on the bases. Belly at first, wide over there at second. All of them walk. Things are a little bit easier when you don't even have to lift the bat off your shoulders. First pitch to Davis. There's a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. One foul back to Nanette, 0 and 2. Yeah, nothing against George Davis, but a 171 hitter right now. He's 0 for 4. This is who you need to attack if you're North Greenville. Yeah, you got to go after him, and, and you're going to have to go after Paul Hegeman on deck, who's already homered tonight. Here's the 0 2. Chopped up the middle. It's going to be a tough play to get two. They'll tag the runner that will try to throw to first, but it's not in time. So the Hurricanes get a run back. It's now five to three. That was a tough play for Roddy. There was no real way he was going to be able to turn two on that one. That's a big run there for the Hurricanes and run of insurance here in the top of the ninth. And that was their first run since the top of the second inning. Here's Paul Hegeman. He can, with a base, he can really do some damage to kind of get this lead back up to three. Yeah, three, three for four with an RBI, 283 his current average. So this is a big at bat. The 1 0. Another good stop there from Phil. Davis is going to move 90, up 90 feet. Now basic could score two. North Green, we got to try to clamp it down right here. The Hurricanes, you, you be able to possibly deal a 
a death blow right here with the base hit, the pitch. And this is another ball, 3-0. and That one's right there, three and one. One thing, uh, look back at the Crusaders, there was a lot of it has been on you. Like, there's been so many free passes. Again, that, that walks are Bradley before that Fielder's Choice was the 10th free passes. That one's chopped foul. 10 free passes on it, especially in postseason baseball in a regional or a super regional anywhere. That's, you're, that's, that's pretty tough to win with. Two misses, and the bases are loaded again. 11th free pass of the ball game issued by North Greenville pitching. Another one of those would bring in a run. making sure that Dawson Taylor declares he's in the windup. First pitch is a call strike, 0-1. Patterson's 0 for 4 on the day, got to go after him. Here's the pitch. Slapped out of play, 0-2. North Greenville, you got to keep things where you're at. Hurricanes, you know the top of the order is coming up for the Crusaders. Want to try to crush, push across as many runs as he can. Ski right three. Big strikeout there for Dawson Taylor. Sends us to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Hurricanes do pick up a run. Thanks in large part to four free passes is issued in the inning. They do not record a hit in the top of the ninth inning. All right, North Greenville's got to get two runs at least to keep this one going. So here we go, new pitcher for Georgia Southwestern for the first time today. <laughs> for this, some odd pitches for this later. For this game, yeah. It is number 14, Joseph Roden, red shirt sophomore from Locust Grove, Georgia. Roden comes in with a 4.39 ERA, two and two for the year. This will be his 18th appearance, does have four saves on the season, 26 and two thirds innings pitched. 13 earned runs allowed, 21 walks, 30 strikeouts. It's going to be interesting now that the North Greenville hitters get to see a right-hander for the first time today. Again, give all the credit in the world to Mr. Usan over there. I mean, over 140 some my pitches, eight innings, and three runs on the board. I mean, he, I mean, he held a large part of their hitters in check. Other than the double to Monteith in the first inning, he held the middle portion of their lineup really in check. I mean, Bale and Marek Kluper combined uh, 0 for 7. Anytime you do that against North Greenville, you got a chance to win. Yeah, and the good thing for the Hurricanes is that after Carter Deerdorf, who is going to lead, lead off the inning, it's going to be top of the order, you have four right-handed batters in a row. Mm -hmm. Now, they are not easy outs by any means, but if you're playing that righty-righty that matchup, mm -hmm. that's what you want if you're, if you're the Hurricanes. But if you're North Greenville, you're okay with the matchup. You'll take that. Yeah. Anytime you can get those four up to like, bat. You don't like being down two runs, but if you had to take a portion to be down with, you'd, you'd take the top of the order we're right where we're at. Definitely. Here's Carter Deerdorf. First pitch to him is over four. Strike 0 and 1. Deerdorf is one for three. Did have, a, have a, that RBI sacrifice fly in the seventh inning. Got North Greenville on the board at the time. 
There's another one. Right there, strike two. Deardorff trying to be a true leadoff hitter, trying to watch a couple pitches so that the rest of the lineup can kind of get a visual on the pitches. But now he's got to protect. Here's the 0-2. It's one of those you almost wish you'd have swung if, if, if you're Deardorff. Are oh, you talking about the wild pitch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> swings and misses easy, easy, easily at first base. Well, actually, kind of said 2020. Yeah, yeah, of course. Counts at one and two. There's a one-two from Roden. That's hit hard. That's down the right field line. That's going to be extra bases. Deardorff around first on his way to second. They're going to hold him up there. A leadoff double for Carter Deardorff, and the Crusaders are in business. That was just past the outreach arms of Hegeman down there down the line. I thought for a second he was really going to dive and knock that one down. So here's Pat Monty. Now look at that one. And just patched the outreach arms of Hegeman down there. Thought for a second that Deardorff was going to think about going for three, but you know if you're down one, he might try. Right, right. Yeah, and if you're Georgia Southwestern, you're not, you can't even worry about the runner at second. Just have to pitch these guys as if there's nobody on base. You don't want to say he doesn't matter, but in the grand scheme of things, it don't matter. Right. Here's Pat Monteith, one for three on the day, one hit being a double in the first. That's Fist on the right side. It's at least going to be the runner over. It's going to be a tough play. They're going to throw over first. They say he got him. Pat Monteith is emphatically saying, review that, and we're going to get a review here. Yeah, it North Greenfield did not hesitate. We're going to take another look here. But Monteith looking all the way, dives head first. And you're not going to be able to overturn it there because he can't see his hand. Yeah, that's, we'll have to that's, see that's if there's the, another angle. That's the tough part about this. When does his hand hit the bag? I mean, you look right there. It looks like he's it safe. It looks like he's there. But. But, yeah, I mean, you're going to need another angle. That's the question. Is there another one? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. There he's it is safe. right there. Perfect. Great camera work. Great job by our camera crew out there. That's a great look right there. So we fully expect based off that runners to that be we on just the corners. Saw, it, look, it looked like his hand was on the bag. Yeah. Man, that's awesome camera work, guys. Unbelievable. <laughs> Good job. The pressure's on too. Oh yeah. Coming in clutch. Again, based off that look that we just got, if they see that, it looks like we're going to have an overturn call on runners on the corners. That's that's very big, too, because I know we struggled today, but the big bad John Michael Fail is on deck. Yeah. He would stand in. And I am a little surprised it is taking a little this long. Yeah, I mean, they we've, we've gone through it the whole season. There's times where even if they're pretty sure that the call is going to stand or, you know, whether it's going to be – turn overturned or it's if it's going to stand they usually watch it a couple times just to mm -hmm. just to be absolutely certain so so nothing unusual here yeah i remember the very first review we had can't remember the umpire's name but will kept telling me that uh he was certain that it was going to stand but then he kept saying show me one more time all right yeah that's going to stand Show me one more time. <laughs> so so it does happen where they, they I watch. I think it. I know what the call is. Yeah. Give me another one. Yeah, look. you just want to be absolutely sure. So nothing wrong with that. Get another look at it right here. And since we're seeing the replay, that's, yep, here come the umpires. Yep. Oops. Yep. That is indeed the correct call. So now there's runners on the corners and nobody out.
Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Baba Dunnigan's got a little bit of flair for the dramatic right there, doesn't he? <laughs> That's the point of review, right? That's what's the, the um, exact call. Get the right call. What's the official in the NHL that um that's real dramatic with the I know the, you're uh, talking about. I don't know his name. I can't remember his name. It's it is so funny uh, seeing his <laughs> seeing his calls. I will say I, I think baseball definitely needs more of that, you need, especially at the major league level. Get get some personality, guys. You know, I mean, like I know I understand you're making an announcement in front of forty some thousand people, and you hadn't had to do that before. Wes McCauley. That's there it. you go. That, yep. Now I know the name now. <laughs> so how's this for dramatic? Tell so, you what, man. What a game this has been. Now, if you were to get into a, a hold of one here, that would be some sort of way to break the Division II baseball record with a walk-off three-run homer. Now, if you're... Now, if you're the Hurricanes, obviously that's the last thing you want. You would argue maybe, hey, there is an open base. It isn't first base. But then again, it's like, all right, now you want to deal with Marek Kluke. Like, pick your poison here. The runners on the corners here for John Michael Fail. First pitch to him. Skips up there. Good stop there by Alexander. Oh boy, late night drama here in Tigerville. Just past 10.30, 10.36 to be official. Game now three hours old. Appreciate everyone staying up with us here tonight. Almost 800 viewers. That currently. one's hit out to right field. That ball's got a chance. That ball's at the wall. That ball is gone. Oh my goodness. John Michael Fell with the walk off three run homer. Are you kidding me? Walk-off homer. One for the record books, too. He's now alone at the top of the home run rankings. It's a Division II baseball, and what a way to do it in a heartbreaking fashion for the Hurricanes. But, oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? They don't call them the cardiac kids for nothing, don't they? Oh my goodness, what a ball game. What's the word here? You wanna sit here and just kinda of pontificate, <laughs> like you wanna think about what in the world we just witnessed. My goodness. Unbelievable. I guess we need to do the final tallies here. Again, five <laughs> runs, eight hits, no errors for the for the Hurricanes here tonight. You know, tough. Get another look at it. Wasn't his the most kill ball he's ever had in his career, but it, all that matters is it got over the fence in right field. They were dead for the majority of that game. Nothing. They didn't seem they ne needed something. They got a little splash. They were Corey Bivens, a triple in the seventh. Got to run across. Then in, the, then in the eighth inning, got a couple runs. I got a home run from David Lewis. You got a couple base hits from Vasquez and Kaminsky. Able to scratch across a run. And just an unbelievable finish here in Tigerville. Take a breather. In a history setting, record breaking home run for John Michael Fell. How else can he do it in walk-off fashion here in a regional here in Tigerville? Unbelievable. Winning pitcher of record goes winner gets is Dawson Taylor. Joseph Roden, of course, gets the loss. Again, again, shout out. I want to give a second to Georgia Southwestern. A great season. The first ever trip into the NCAA regional. Uh, regular season champions of the Peach Bell, tournament champions of the Peach Bell, a great season overall. Again, not the way that they would want to go out, but finished with a 34 and 19 record. Shout out to the Hurricanes of Georgia Southwestern 
and unbelievable. We <laughs> get a look at John Michael Fell, pumped up as he should be. In things with a walk-off three-run homer. These kids got a flair for the dramatic, don't they? Well, guess what? We've only played two games of this regional. We got a few, at least two more to come. We got one more coming tomorrow night, 7.30. We'll be with you probably just a couple minutes before first pitch. Everybody's just trying to calm down, get a feel for everything. Now we need to take a look at the bracket. After that, that absolute heroic display from John Michael Fail. They now move to 1-0. Mount Olive's 1-0. So now, this is how this will work. Tomorrow is game one of a glorified best of three series between the North Greenville Crusaders and the Mount Olive Trojans. Uh, with, with the rivalry that those two teams have, we're in for a good, good couple nights of baseball. I'm very sure of that. Well, we're going to say so long for now. Game took about three hours, just about three hours and ten minutes or so. Boy, what an ending we had here tonight. Again, I'm Timothy Holcomb alongside Alan Cahaley, producer Will Cahaley back in the studio. That was just night one. I wonder what nights two and three are going to be. Let's find out together, shall we? I'll see you all tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.